welcome back to my channel I hope you are all good this is a highly requested video I don't know why I haven't done it before but this is all about top coating and how I personally top coat there's gonna be 50 other ways I am sure but this is how I do it so I'm gonna show you a few different things so things that have got a natural little lip as you can see here it's gonna help me out a lot things that have got a, an immediate sharp 90 degree edge awkward shapes such as maybe keychains or trinkets or bowls what I do there and also how I flood coat for those items that have got a rounded edge so I heard a quote once and I really cannot remember where I heard it from and that is that resin doesn't go where resin hasn't been and what that means is that resin as long as you pour the right amount and you don't flood your piece the resin will automatically stop at the edge it won't fly over there's there's varying reasons why it might fly over and that is that the resin is too thin or that you've poured just too much at once or that your surface is completely <laughs> uneven. The other reason it might go over is because you've created a channel for it to go off. So if you accidentally picked up your coaster or you touched the edge where the resin was, then straight away that resin says, yay, let's go. And it just flies off to the point where you've touched it. Some resin artists will sand their piece down before they top coat. And this is to ensure that the top coat adheres to the resin. I've never sanded and I've not had a problem, but, that, but don't necessarily follow me because of that. Do what you find is best for you. Honestly, anything I can do to get out of sanding, I will do it. <laughs> so I'm going to get my gloves on, get my respirator on, put on my PPE, my apron, mix up the resin, and then I will show you how I coat this. So this is the very first piece that I am top coating and we're lucky with this one because it's got that natural lip that you get when you don't fill a mould completely to the top. It always comes out where the resin sinks down a bit. It gives you this such an amazing natural lip. So I don't worry too much about when I top coat these as long as you go slowly. With this one I just poured the resin into the centre as you saw I did and then I just work it out to the edges with the lollipop stick. What I am doing is just making sure that I don't push it out too fast. It has to go out slowly to those edges otherwise you do risk pouring it right over the edge. At some point you do get an idea for how much more you can pour, how much more is needed. It just automatically comes naturally to me now because I've been doing resin for a couple of years so I can kind of gauge how much I can start with and then after a couple of seconds how much more I can add to help cover that surface. The trick with top coating like this is to make sure that you've poured enough. You don't want to pour too much but you don't want to pour too little because what will happen is it will come back, it will come back into the centre of the piece and at times you'll find yourself with edges that just it didn't stay it didn't stay at the edge because there wasn't enough on there and i got this quite a few times with my little trinket trays even though they've got a wall i was finding that i wasn't pouring enough so i'm just showing you an example here of a 90 degree edge so when you've got those coasters that have got a gorgeous gorgeous straight flat edge they're perfect so i'm just pouring a little bit of resin slowly near the edge it is near the edge but it's not going to go anywhere because I poured it just too slowly and it's got so much room to play and you'll see now any second there we go it's completely met that edge and it's not going to budge it's just not going to go anywhere um, and here is another example of what I've just showed you where you can pour the top coat on bring it to the edge with your piece it won't go over because you're being slow you're being gentle and you're just not pouring too much as soon as you've got those edges covered, then you can pour more in the middle, just not too much. And like I said, as time goes on, you gauge it, you will gauge it. It will come naturally to you. Here's an example of what happens when you pour too much too quickly and it's just going to fly straight off. I've also done this many times. <laughs> Here I'm just showing you an example of what happens when you touch the side. It creates a channel for that resin to run off. Now it's not going to destroy your piece. The top will still stay on but you will lose a little bit over the edge and this edge perfect stayed right there did not move the next video we're going to talk about flood coating so this is super handy if you've got rounded edges if you if you're top coating anything with a round edge usually these petri dishes they come with a bit of a round edge 
Flood coating is an easy way. Um, you tape up the bottom using masking tape. I use frog tape, green frog tape. Or you can paint the bottom with liquid latex. I know a lot of people do that. Wait for the liquid latex to dry. And then the next day you can just peel them both off. You've got a perfect top coat. What I do when I do this is I run my fingers around the edge to make sure that those edges are also coated in the resin. Here's an example of how to top coat tiny, tiny pieces. Now, I don't do this generally. If a customer asked me for an initial letter, I would generally make them and sell them as it is now that you're looking at it. If they ask me to put a top coat on, make it super, super shiny bright, I'd tell them to go somewhere else. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I really wouldn't. But this is how I would do it. I don't generally do this. But this is an example of if you've got a tiny, tiny detailed piece, I would use a cocktail stick just to make sure that it just doesn't fly off the edge. It's so easy to just drip it, even that drip there. If I dripped that a millimetre to the right, it, it would have all just flown off and anything I put on afterwards would have flown off. So I don't show you this whole process, but just using a tiny cocktail stick to get it to those edges, get it right into those corners and just drag it around using that tiny, tiny stick. It's the best, it's, it's an easy way, it's an easy way for these tiny pieces. I'll do anything to get out of having to do this for tiny pieces. <laughs> Have you worked out how lazy I am yet? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on to the next bit. This is a fun method. Now, a lot of people would choose to spray paint, spray, gloss spray, all of that. You can do that and that's fine. But these molds I got for Halloween last year from um, Amazon and they're matte. They're matte molds. So as you know, if your mold is matte, your resin's gonna be matte. If your mold is shiny, your resin's gonna be shiny. So the way I coat these is the easiest, just to use the gloves that I've been using and get some resin in between my fingers and just rub them all over. And this is called the rubbing technique. <laughs> you wanna make sure you don't put too much on because it will start to settle in those eye sockets. And that's pretty much it. These are all the pieces that I top coated. This is the next day just to give you a close up of them. I absolutely love them. Honestly, these coasters are going to be available on my Etsy in the next couple of weeks when I finally get that back up and running. But yeah, really, really love it. Don't forget to use your torch as well to get rid of those bubbles. Don't look at the skill on this piece because, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not good. The principle was there just showing you what I would do if I was to do this. But look at those edges. I was not paying it. I was really not putting in the effort on this piece. But you get the gist. You get, you get how to do these miniature pieces by just using a little stick. So yeah. There you go. The skull, super shiny, super glossy. I absolutely love this. And a lot of people do top coat like this. You know, they put their gloves on, they get messy, and they just rub the resin all over. But for molds like this, bowls, anything that's awkward shape, it really is a handy one. This one here, this was the flooding technique. And that's it. Now, just need to get this tape off. So taking the tape off the back really is easy when you use frog tape. Sometimes the resin drips can be a little bit stubborn and you can use your heat tool to warm them up. And I find that mostly when I do flat artwork, um, like when I did my clock recently, I did need a little bit of help to get that tape off the back, but it always comes off because the resin is on top of that tape. So you don't let the resin win. You need to tell it who's boss. <laughs> but like I just showed you there, just get your nail underneath and it generally comes off okay. I'm not sure why I felt like I needed to show you this one over and over, but... Uh, <laughs> took my time with this one there you go you get it don't you you get it they're coming off they're coming off okay so i hope you found this video really helpful like i said at the beginning these really are methods i use um you can adopt them if you want to um please sand if you feel you need to um yeah i just hope you've really enjoyed it and you found it helpful there's probably 50 other ways to top coat um and do let me know what you do and if you do anything completely different to me but this is the way I like doing it and I hope you found it really, really helpful and I will see you in my next video. Bye.